Hello, welcome to a video in which we will discuss and look at the new Lisa Eldridge foundation. I will choose the right shade for me on camera. I will also do first impressions and the application of the product and I will also do a wear test. So if you want to see how this foundation wears and listen to my final thoughts, that's going to be included in this video as well. I will also share my opinion about what do I think of the launch. Well, Lisa's approach on delivering this foundation with the sample cards. My name is Irina and I'm the owner of the blog Lipstick Cafe and if you're interested in beauty related topics please consider subscribing to this channel. I don't think Lisa Eldridge needs any introduction, she's one of the most known and loved celebrity makeup artists and the reason why this launch is super super exciting is because she's mostly known for achieving a really seamless skin for her clients. So I am expecting that this foundation is going to deliver a really seamless beautiful effect. Before we go into more details, I just want to quickly tell you a bit about my skin just so you understand what's going on. I have a really, a really difficult skin. It's attacked by the Scottish weather, which is bitterly cold, ridiculously windy, dry and also very humid and it's just a really rough weather on the skin. On top of that, I have quite a bit of irritation from face coverings. At the moment, my skin is having a really, really bad day so this is perfect for trying a new foundation. I also have a bit of rosacea but at the moment I'd say the major issue with my skin is the dermatitis from face coverings. That includes a lot of redness, irritation and a lot of tiny 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 pustules and pimples which are very very unfortunate. I have very large pores despite the fact that I would say that my skin is towards dry. Definitely rough patches, skin that's slightly exfoliating, rough feeling on the skin. I would say it's more towards the drier side but with a tendency of a bit of oiliness just on my nose or and on my forehead. So that's all about my skin just so you can kind of relate to what's going on when I'm trying this foundation. If you want to know all about how to choose the perfect shade of foundation for you, I have a thorough detailed article on my blog and I will put the link in the description down below for you to read. I would highly encourage you to read that article. So here's the sample card that I received with my order from Lisa Eldridge and I decided to go for the light set number two. So this set contains four different undertones that are slightly different in shade as well. I think the approach of giving customers four different shades in one sample card is absolutely genius. And that is because the area where I feel that people make the most mistakes when it comes to choosing the right shade of foundation is the undertones. So by dividing the samples of foundation like this, you can kind of guess the right shade for you but if you have no clue what your undertone is cards like these will allow you to discover what's your undertone. The reason why I went for the light set number two is because the website has a tool where you can match the perfect shade of foundation for you that you currently use with the shades of the Lisa Eldridge foundation. The foundation I'm currently using is the Bourjois Serum Foundation and I'm using the shade 52 Vanilla and that was being matched with the number nine shades of the Lisa Eldridge foundation which is I think the light medium set and it's the number nine with olive undertones. My judgment in going a card down to one of the lightest shades it's because the 52 Vanilla from Bourjois, it's slightly too dark for me. So that was my logic in going for this set instead of the number nine shade, which was being advised to me on the Lisa Eldridge website. If you have a foundation that you're currently using, that you are aware that it's either too light or too dark, and the website recommends to you a particular shade in the Lisa Eldridge foundation, it kind of still gives you a clue about where you're being situated at. So you can make a judgment and be like, this means I need to go lighter or this means I need to go slightly darker. If I am to take a guess in what shades is going to be the perfect shade for me, I think it's going to be number six with the golden undertones. Although looking at it, I have a feeling this might be just a tiny bit too dark for me, but we will see. If that is the case, I might have to go up to number five, which has neutral undertones. I would classify my skin as 
with golden undertones. This is too pink for me by far. Oh dear, that's way too dark and way too yellow. So yes, I was correct. This is too dark for me. Both of these are a bad match for my skin. That's not good because from now on we're only getting darker. None of these match. That is a problem. That means that I need to go back to the website and order the light set number one. And out of those, I have a suspicion I will be shade number three, the light with golden undertones. How pale am I? And the reason I'm so critical about this is that this foundation comes with 40 shades, so... I do want to find the right match. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I will continue to apply this foundation and do a wear test and tell you my thoughts about it. Despite the fact that I would never purchase any of the shades, I would go a card down to the lighter shades and test those as well before actually purchasing the product. Before application, I will just very quickly tell you my expectations when it comes to a foundation. I am very, very picky when it comes to foundation. I want it to look just like skin. I want it to not settle in my fine lines and my pores, and I want it to wear seamlessly throughout the day. I don't want it to collect on my skin and just look like powder, so I don't want it to be overly matte or overly dewy. I just want something natural. So let's see how this foundation will wear. I will quickly mention that this is a fragrance-free foundation, which is really, really good, especially for people like me that have really sensitive skin with dermatitis from face coverings and so on. That is a brilliant fact about the foundation. Lisa said that the equivalent of each of the samples is five pumps of foundation, so this should be enough for me to apply it on my face. And and I've just applied my moisturizer and quite a generous layer of my usual sunscreen I wear on an everyday basis. And the reason I'm trying this foundation on on top of sunscreen is because I wanted to see how it sets and how it looks on top of my regular skincare because that's how I'm going to use the foundation. So I'm not leaving the house without my sunscreen and this is the sunscreen that I wear when I wear makeup. As you can tell, it just doesn't look like anything on the skin, which is just brilliant. So I will use a flat foundation brush from Real Techniques because that's how Lisa advises to apply this foundation. She suggests that this is the best way. And then I will move on to a brush that I generally use when applying my foundation. And this is the Real Techniques Mini Expert Face Brush. So we'll see how this goes. I will start with very thin layers, just like Lisa advises to. So I'm using shade number six, which I think there's a chance this will suit me once it's spread out on the skin really, really well. There is a chance that this will match, although for winter, I probably still want to go a shade down. Yeah, this is too dark for my neck. This should work for today. I like that the golden undertone in it is definitely cancelling out the redness in my skin. I'm using a brush that I'm more familiar with to quickly blend it into the skin. This is probably looking a bit too matte for my skin. Right, usually I skip the foundation on my forehead now that I've got a fringe, but I want to apply it on my forehead for the purpose of this video because I've got quite a bit of expression lines and fine lines on my forehead. I've got like 11s here. I want to see if this foundation is going to emphasize them throughout the day. Very curious about that. I know you're probably looking and 
being like, what is she talking about? There are no lines. There are no lines now, but throughout the day as I lift my eyes a lot and frown and all those things, makeup usually tends to set in there. This is so dry on my face. Right, so what I can tell immediately is that for my skin, this foundation would need something more oily and nourishing under it because at the moment I'm afraid it clings a little bit to the rough patches of my skin. I have pretty bad dermatitis at the moment so I'm pretty sure the dermatitis is overemphasizing those dry patches and is creating these really really textured areas of my skin but overall I definitely think this foundation on my skin especially late autumn like now and winter will probably need a bit of extra help. I will continue to apply a bit of more coverage because I want to cover the dermatitis. I'm going to try to do my base without using concealer. So I'm going to add more in the center of my face where I've got the dermatitis. Also to start to apply some under my eye. Try with my finger. Wow, this is so dry on my skin. It's just gripped way too hard on my skin. And possibly the fact that this shade is a tiny bit too dark for me is also overemphasizing all these textures on my skin. That's why it's important to have the right shade of foundation. So I'm still applying more. Mm, it just sits on all my skin texture. So I've got my dampened Real Techniques sponge. I'm going to see if this helps making it a little bit softer on my skin. Oh yeah, the sponge is making a huge difference. This just looks more like skin now. So I'm just going to let this set for a couple of minutes because apparently this is a self-setting foundation and it should provide a really soft focus. So I will go ahead and apply the rest of my Lisa Eldridge products just to see how well they work together. This is a highlighter that I absolutely love. And while I'm aware that the color of blush I have will probably not go extremely well with this gloss, I wanted to apply it for the purpose of seeing how it looks like on top of the foundation. This is definitely making the skin look very healthy and like it doesn't have any makeup on top. It's almost like it changed the foundation a little bit. Just under my eyes. Okay, my camera died as usual. It's becoming really unreliable. So this is what it looks like with my phone. It blends really nice on top of the foundation. Foundation is starting to look better on my skin. So that is interesting. We'll see how it wears throughout the day. Right, so I brought my phone closer. My phone is ruthless, <laughs> it's showing texture and detail, so if I bring you close to my skin... I'm not sure how well the other camera picked up, but I've got a lot of rough patches around my mouth and this area of the face where the dermatitis is. And it starts to look more seamless 
And I don't know if you can tell, but my skin is getting a bit more luminous as well. So it's not as matte as it was when I first applied the foundation. I'm starting to like it more and more and more. It's definitely becoming more seamless on the skin with every minute that it's passing. It seems to not make my dry patches so obvious. Overall, this has been an interesting and pretty different foundation application than what I'm used to. And I will be back with my final thoughts, discussion about the launch and how this foundation wore throughout the day. I've been wearing the foundation for about 10 hours now and I know the light is really bad, don't worry. As I'm talking through the wear test and my overall thoughts, I will insert footage and photographs from natural light today. You will get to see more details on the product sitting on my skin. In these 10 hours, I was wearing the foundation. I've tried to do things that a normal person would do wearing this foundation such as you know being outside and the elements having a walk around I was caught by rain at some point which I feel like it's very UK appropriate you know I've sat in my house for a bit I've sat in air conditioning I've sat next to central heating so I've been inside outside I feel like I got a bit of everything just to make it realistic so I wasn't just wearing this product while sitting in the house and the first thing I have to mention for sure is that after about half an hour, an hour, something like that, the product definitely smoothed my skin and blurred it. It took a while. It definitely made the dry patches less obvious every minute it passed from the application. So I feel like it took quite a bit of time to settle and create that blurred effect that Lisa is talking about. It made my skin look really, really smooth. I couldn't see any pores, which was really really nice. In fact, people that saw me today commented how smooth my skin is looking. For the first seven hours, it didn't get oily at all in the T-zone. Despite me having dry skin, I do tend to get an oily nose and a bit of an oily forehead, not too much, just mostly just the nose. But this foundation for the first seven hours, it made my nose look as perfect as it ever did. Blurred and smooth with no visible blackheads or pores. Pretty amazing. However, even after just seven hours, I could tell that it's too dry for my skin a little bit. You know, I could see that texture on my skin that usually happens when the product is just not dewy enough for my dry skin. Especially around my mouth where I've got the bad dermatitis at the moment from face coverings which not only gave me quite a bit of pimples but it also created rough patches. After 10 hours I can say that it's looking absolutely gorgeous in this area including my forehead. However around my mouth as I've just mentioned is just to dry and the product separated quite a bit in my smile lines so if you're close to me you can tell that it's just not hydrating enough for my skin However, I do have to mention that it did not settle absolutely at all in the fine lines under my eyes or my expression wrinkles in between my eyebrows and my forehead. I've got pretty, <laughs> pretty deep expression wrinkles which are always so visible after wearing makeup and this foundation is absolutely really flattering. On that, I would say this is the first foundation that I ever tried to be this smooth under my eyes and this smooth on my forehead. That's definitely a record. Overall, it reminds me a lot of the Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation. This one, which is my current favorite foundation. In fact, it was Lisa's recommendation. She recommended it in a couple of videos. In terms of finish and coverage, they're very, very similar, except that the Lisa Eldridge Foundation wears much better in the fine lines and expression wrinkles. It has more of a blurred and smooth effect than the Bourjois one. The Lisa the Eldritch Foundation is also better on the nose and in the pores and things like that. So it's definitely up there. It has more of a smooth finish, but the Bourjois one definitely looks much oilier towards the end of the day, whereas the Lisa one is looking more matte. Obviously, that's probably why it's too dry for my skin as well. The truth is, is that I had a pretty good comparison for it because I think this foundation is just ridiculously good. So... 
You know what I mean? Like, I know I've complained about it quite a lot in this video, but if I really think about it, out of the dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of foundations I've tried throughout the years, I think the Lisa Eldridge one is up there with the Bourjois one. I think it's in between the first two choices of products that I think are just really really good. It will just depend on your skin, how dry it is. I don't think this foundation would be extremely suitable for very dry skin or for very oily skin, you know, the extremities and it will depend on how much coverage you want. This has a medium coverage. I didn't use any concealer today, so it's just the foundation. It's enough to cover my dermatitis and redness and things, but it's still a universal product with universal qualities of blurring and smoothing and covering a little bit. So it will really depend on what you're expecting from a foundation. It would definitely be a thing for me to try and wear using a more oily and shiny sunscreen and that in this area to see if it helps the Lisa Eldridge foundation to sit better on this area because of the, the active dermatitis I feel like it's a very tough problem to fix. If the oilier sunscreen made a difference I will certainly update you about it. I'm inclined to order more sample cards and try them. If shade number three is better for me I will update you again depending on how long it takes me to edit this video I might just do this and update you. Hello I just want to do a quick update on the foundation which is just this one here. I've been putting it to the test for two weeks now just slightly over two weeks for the first week with testers and for the second week with the actual foundation that I purchased from Lisa's pop-up store in Covent Garden in London. I was lucky enough to have my shade match checked by Lisa herself and she did agree that shade number three with golden undertones was perfect for me. If you want to read more about the packaging and what do I think of it then please click the link in the description of the video with my review of the pop-up store in London because I go into a lot of details in that article. My thoughts on the product after two weeks of wearing it remain the same as in this video so per my initial review and that is that around my my eyes, nose and forehead, this product looks absolutely flawless. It just makes all your pores disappear and it just doesn't set in any of the fine lines and wrinkles, which is pretty incredible. In two weeks, I've tried this product with several skincare items with different primers, with different moisturizer underneath, with different sunscreens. And I can confirm that for my very, very dry skin, especially now that we're moving through winter, this formula is just a tiny bit too drying for me. Just like I mentioned it in the video, after a certain point during the day, this area of my face where my skin is very, very dry, it's just uh, the foundation starts to look a bit like powder and it's just separating a little bit. And, you know, I noticed that the more nourishing and oilier the creams are under the foundation, the product just loses a tiny, tiny bit of its very smoothing, blurring quality. Just as a personal note, Note, my favorite application for this foundation is a mixture in between a flat foundation brush and my fingers. It applies very beautiful with your fingers as well and I love using this as my concealer now under my eyes especially just because it doesn't set in any of the fine lines. So just to make it super clear I'm not saying this is a bad product at all. I think it's another innovative product that Lisa released. I'm not sure I've experienced anything like this before, so the smoothing and blurring qualities that it offers and the fact that it never sets into the fine lines, the fact that it doesn't change color and shades throughout the day is absolutely phenomenal. All I'm saying is that for a product like a foundation, for my specific skin type, it's just a bit too dry. So what I feel like it will be my perfect combination would be this foundation under my eyes and around my nose area and forehead and then around my mouth and jawline. Her future tinted moisturizer that she said she's been working with for a while. So skin is just so different from person to person and I feel like a foundation is pretty impossible to suit 
every single skin type in the world. The only other thing I wanted to mention is that Lisa's Enlivening Blush on this foundation stays put the entire day. The pigment of the blush is not quite as potent with other foundations throughout the day, but with the Lisa's foundation, the blush is just absolutely incredible and it's just looking so beautiful. I'm wearing the foundation in shade 3 just now with the Enlivening Blush the um, highlighter as well and I'm just really happy with how this looks. I love it. And just because I mentioned it that I will talk about the approach regarding this foundation, the approach of the launch, the testers. I will speak quickly about it. I'm aware that this video is getting ridiculously long. I think Lisa stayed true to her philosophy about choosing the right shade of foundation. She has some older videos in which she talks about, you know, the importance of you trying on samples of foundations in the comfort of your own home, you know, being able to try the natural light, being able to try it in the environments that you'd wear the foundation in and see if you like it, if you like the texture, the formula, the shade. She stayed true to that. So she's allowing her customers to find the perfect match, to try it in, you know, from their homes. And I think the inclusion of the four shades is really smart as I said you know <sighs> trying foundations have definitely became pretty difficult in the last two years you know so many brands and shops stopped giving samples and you can't return the product so it's became very hard to buy new foundation I feel like it's definitely not the only brand that's doing this though I know that the Touche Cla foundation you know you can receive a free sample for that with free delivery in fact I'd say that getting these samples from Lisa is a bit more difficult because for example now that I realized I'd like the lighter sample card I feel like I have to order something from the website otherwise I can't really justify the delivery fee two pounds that you know the sample card would cost I think that would bring me up to six pounds just to get the sample cards so these were my thoughts on the new Lisa Eldridge foundation if you've made it so far in the video thank you so so much for watching I hope it was helpful please like let me know what you think of it, what your expectations are, what shade was your perfect match, if you had any surprises with the undertones and shades. Just let me know about all these in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up to this video, ring the notification bell uh, to be notified about future content. This has definitely been a journey <laughs> compiling this video, so thank you so much and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye!